everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts. Today I've got um, a tutorial I'm going to share on making one of these um, spirit dolls. So I'm going <laughs> to... Not that this is a spirit doll. This is a start. I've got a face from the Sculpey Faces mold. And I've done a little... Uh, extra detail on it before I baked it. This piece is baked. And I'm, I'm just looking at to see if I can decide what colors I used. It looks like some souffle clay mixed with gold. But I can't be sure about that. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a bit of Primo any color doesn't really matter and this is going to be for the inspiration stick that goes in the center of one of these spirit dolls all right all i did was roll it into a tapered snake lay it down sort of flat Take a little bit of the Sculpey Bacon Bond or Liquid Sculpey, Liquid Female, Liquid Kato Clay, whatever you're using. Your brand of clay is not really um, important. You can even do this from Sculpey 3, even though it's a little brittle, as long as you bake it. Um, for long enough it'll be it'll be okay because it's going to be hanging on the wall okay I'm just gonna press that down and you can see I didn't press it all the way down I left it to where this is a little this is like a sixteenth of an inch thick maybe an eighth of an inch all right and why I said this was an inspiration stick is because like a spirit doll, you leave a message inside the doll. So you can write while the clay is raw in the clay. On this one, I've, I've wrote focus. That was my inspiration for starting this piece. So on this piece, I'm just going to... I'm just going to write art. And it's pretty warm in my studio today. Alright, so maybe you can see that says art. Alright, the last thing I'm going to do before I bake this bit is to flatten the bottom out just a bit. You can flatten the whole stick out if you want and put a hole. And if you're doing a hole like this ahead of time with twist what you're putting making the hole with <laughs> it will help to kind of drill out the hole as opposed to just punching it all right so i am going to find a baking tile and bake this and i'm going to bake it for 40 minutes at uh 250s which is what my oven is set on although it bakes hotter than that um, you should always use an oven thermometer to check your oven's temperature because they're rarely right. So I'm going to bake this and I'll be back. Okay, now we're going to work on the clothes. And I'm going to go ahead and work on the green one because that's what I'm working on. <laughs> I've got three colors here. This is um, Primo Wasabi. 
this is Primo Effects in the translucent green. And I know it doesn't look translucent right now, but it will. And this is um, Primo Effects in the glitter green. I love the sparkly. So what I'm going to do is do a gradient. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can um, cut triangles and barely butt them up against each other and do a fold over, fold over, fold over, and you will get a gradient. But what I'm going to do is just to overlap by a good a good half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. And you can see my pieces are not anywhere near the same length or anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold them this way. I'm going to fold them the direction of the, of the overlap. If that makes any sense. So I'm going to run this through my pasta machine a few times and see what we get. Alright, here it is after I've run it through the pasta machine only about 10 times. Alright, and I like the, um, I like the, the heavy divides. You can keep going and it will make a nice gradient from top to bottom. But I'm just going to use it like this. Got a little streak on it. Alright, I'm going to roll it through one more time, and then I'll, alright, I think this is just about perfect. Don't worry about the uh, edges, you can cut them off, or you can use them. So, the next thing you need to decide, do you want her cape, gown, dress, whatever you want to call it, to go from light to dark or from dark to light. I think there'll be a greater contrast if I go from light to dark. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is to To bend back, <laughs> I, I want this to be on the inside, although either way it would be uh, close to the top, so you probably wouldn't see it, and on the back. Alright, and the next thing you can do is to create some texture um, across the bottom, um, although most of that would be on the back. I'm going to do some on the sides right here. And I'm going to do this before I wrap it around because it's much easier. Just a little bit of texture. Let's go along the edge up here with a different texture. All right. Now what we're going to do is 
is start about a quarter of the way up the face just maybe right in line with her mouth and don't worry that we haven't put her hair on or anything because that will need to go on top things I can see that I'm going to need to do is to trim the edges of the collar. Alright, and what I mean by that is I need to create a little more that shape. Remember, it's only clay. You can always wad it back up and start over. And again, save your scraps. Yeah. Let's try that again. I'm wanting this to be rather narrow. Uh, I don't want it to fan out too much. And you'll see why. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go. Alright. Uh, uh. Now we just need to adjust it a little bit. If you don't have a baking towel, just use whatever you normally use. I've warped the edge a little bit so it's not making a nice straight line. Alright. Let's see if I can see again. Alright, now down here at the bottom, you can either roll back the edges,
something just like this so you'll be able to hang something from your stick that we that we created the hole for all right and if you're worried about the way this has kind of collapsed we can put some some toilet paper or some wax paper or something underneath there some foil but I'll just puff it back up all right now we're ready to bake it again at this point you could um, dust on some Pearl X powders um, I don't think I'm going to do that this time though. Alright, so I'm going to bake this and then I'll be back. Okay, something that I should have mentioned. <laughs> After you bake your clay, let it cool down in the oven. If you go to mess with it while it's still hot, you can have a disaster. And what I should have done is I've made these little teardrop shaped, leaf shaped, whatever you want to call them, um, supports for when I do stuff like this. And I guess because I was doing a tutorial. All right, I need the thicker one. I've got these in several thicknesses. Nope. Okay, sorry about that. Let's go with the thickest one. No. Alright, so I've coated it up, coated up my, my break with um, a little bit of liquid sculpey, a little bit of bacon bond. Sorry. And I'd say I need to order some, but it's just because it's thick. It takes it a minute to get down there. Alright. Now you might think this would be a, a big serious problem, but when we put our hair on, it's going to provide um, extra support for her head. Alright. So, I will put this back in the oven and listen to my own advice and not mess with it out of those scraps that I cut off from the edges. I just cut some long triangles out and curled the tips over. Put a hole. These will dangle from down at the bottom. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to throw these. I'm going to place these gently in the oven <laughs> and then I'll be back I also made a ball out of the last little bit of the scraps a bead a ball <laughs> I'll take a nap before I come back okay how's that all right I'll be back all right now one of the things you'll notice is I've gone back and put a layer of clay that I did the same stamping on to fill in this little triangle right here my point where it came down was too hidden underneath to be able to even put a jump ring in so I put a triangle of clay and then I put one of my little supports underneath so that it will stay raised up when I bake it and then I'll just poke a hole in the back to put my jump ring I hope that makes sense all right so now is hair she'll need some hair so I've got some gold primo that I'm just going to take a ball of
Okay. And because I have a scrapbooking paper crafting background, sort of, <laughs> this is a stamping block, a rubber stamping block, where you will take um, rubber stamps that don't have a wooden backing and adhere them to this block, readily available at most craft stores. So I'm going to mash this down. Because I want it thicker than um, running it through my pasta machine. Alright, this is some sort of... Some sort of thickness. And you'll see why in just a second. Alright. The slow bacon bun. Again, not necessary, but it keeps you from having to smash the details out of the clay, although the face is baked. Alright. So, there's what we've got. This is just something to adhere your hair to, and to help support her head. Alright. So, I'm going to roll out a little bit more gold clay, and I'll be back. Alright, this is rolled out on like a four on my pasta machine. Just about a midway. And one of the things that I can't tell you <laughs> is how I decide to cut the hair out. It's just a feel um, that I've developed, I guess, over time. So, um... We already know she has a rounded head top. I suppose you could lay her down and trace the top of her head in order to do this. But I just start and make a curve and then decide do I want her hair long or short. And I really feel like in this one I want it short for some reason. Alright, and then on the other side, I want it to swoop out. And I want her to have kind of a short, spiky haircut. Alright. Let's see what we can do with that. <laughs> Erg. Alright. Let's see if I can get this in the oven before my battery completely dies. I charged it a bit. Alright, no, no need to use the bacon bond here because we are sticking clay to clay, raw clay to raw clay. And keep in mind, I may decide I don't like it. Alright, but I think I'm gonna. Alright. Yeah? Alright. 
I've got one of those little gripsters um, tripods and on certain days if you've got lower humidity and you just bump it it will collapse and I do have a tutorial on um, creating flowing hair And one of the things I did want to share is I did put a stone um, on this before I baked it. It's just got a little bacon bond underneath it. And when I mashed it in, I made sure that the bacon bond squeezed out around the edges just a tiny little bit. It'll help hold the stone in there a little better. Now, like I said, keep in mind, it's just going to hang on the wall. If you were going to do a jewelry or something like that you would probably want to find a, a better way to secure it in there. Lisa Pavelka has a product which I have not tried yet. I can't believe I haven't tried yet. Maybe I'll do that and order me some. Um, that's a polybonder. I believe it's called and it's similar to a super glue but for clay you can bake it in the oven and it won't lose its um, integrity if you just use regular super glue and then bake something in the oven um, that's been super glued the super glue will disintegrate all right so let's see if I can turn it where you can see her and her little spiky hair which is go all right and then we're going to put our bale in the top all right now while holding on to the face see if i can do this where you can see it i'm going to take my craft knife and i'm just going to plunge a slot I apologize for that And then I've got one of these glue-on bales. And you can just get these at any craft store. I bought these off of um, eBay. <laughs> and this would be another good place to use the polybonder if you have it. Uh-huh. All right. I'm going to turn it around where I can see it. Let's see if it's... All right. Now, once again, I'm going to bake it. And I'll do it for 40 minutes again. Alright. I shall return. I'll charge my battery while it's baking so my battery won't die. <laughs> All right, here she is so far. We can take the little support block out. 
and all that did was hold up the little triangle that I added. Alright, now is where we can decide what to do about her hair and her details on her face and maybe a little shading on her body. But before I do that, I want to talk about these wings that I created a while back ago, but uh, I've decided to use them on this piece. I actually designed the piece to go with these wings. Alright. And what these are is the Angelina film, which I've shared before in the in the wings tutorial with the liquid clay. And um, all I did was cut the shape out and then I put um, a thin layer of UV resin. And UV resin is self-doming so it has a tendency to not like run over the edge. So that's why I used it. And then all I did was take um, my pen and on the back side I drew in some details. Alright, back when I did that I also did this little dragonfly. Alright. And I used the stickles. And this is the crystal stickles. And I used this one because it's <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine <laughs> to have transparent uh, medium with green iridescent glitter. Drives me crazy. But on this project, it works because it's a green project. So I would pop this around and then set it and let it dry. It doesn't really take that long to dry. 30, 45 minutes or so. Alright. Makes a really cute, sparkly kind of look. Alright, so I'm going to move everything out of the way and show you. Alright, now I apologize ahead of time if you have a hard time seeing. I just ordered me a new clip to hold my camera while I'm filming. Needless to say, I'm crazy excited. I'll be able to clip it anywhere on my desk. Raise it up high if I need to. I'm really excited about it. It doesn't have to follow the pattern on the back necessarily. Exactly. And of course there's all kinds of glitter glues. Other than just stickles. And this is actually a scrap looking. Product. If you've never heard of it, it's made by Ranger and it's stickles. Comes in all colors. Alright, and I even think you can get it from Oriental Trading Company. So I'll let those dry. You can add some little rhinestones with dots of the stickles. Remember, it's just going to hang on the ball. So, alright, I'll let this dry and then I'll be back. Alright, and this is a Dazzling Metallics by Deco Art, and it's the White Pearl. Alright, 
Now, what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to paint with my finger. I'm just going to dip my finger in the lid and tap it off on my glass just a little bit. And I'm going to use it almost like an ink of gold. If I could quit bumping the camera. Right, and it's just a touch just to give it a little shimmer all right but her face I'm gonna go ahead and use some ink of gold on all right and I feel it's only right to cover this again this is um, ink of gold which is a wax based acrylic paint and it's made by Viva decor and I get lots of questions about it um, Lots of questions about um, people have problems with it molding. This is the problem I have more often than not. So it may just be a matter of heat and humidity. I have no idea what actually causes it. But of course when it's dry like this, you can just squirt it with some water. Some distilled water. And um, it will... Um, it will come back to life for a little bit next time you go to use it of course it will need to be done again and I know there are ways to revive it so that's what I need to do is to revive mine alright so just a little touch on her face and after it dries just a few seconds I'll buff it out All right, now all we need to do is gather all our components and put it all together. So I've got some glossy accents. And although I know these wings would hold up in the oven, um, before I put the stickles on. I don't know how they'd react with the stickles on. And I don't want to chance it. So first thing I'm going to do is decide. Where. I want these. And yes, my glossy accents is getting empty too. Right. Now, I probably could get by with a 
get the stickles on the wings is not completely dry. And I want them to be like almost flat out. Hey. Alright, I'm gonna let, the, let that alone. I'm gonna let that alone. I'm gonna leave this alone and let it dry for a while. <laughs> while I work on the um, dangle from the bottom. Alright, I've got a little length of chain, about three inches. And it can be recycled chain or whatever chain you want to use. I've got some 10 millimeter jump rings and some 5 millimeter jump rings. Four or five, somewhere around there. I'm going to take these large jump rings. And normally I have um, packing tape on the end of my pliers to protect um, my jump rings, but I just took it off. It was getting. Um, kind of shredded so it needed to be replaced so I will do that next time Alright, and then this is just two gold seed beads and two tiny little bead caps on either end of this polymer clay bead that I made. I am not kidding y'all, no idea how excited I'll be to get that camera clamp so I can quit trying to look around my camera. I have a full size tripod, don't get me wrong. It's just a pain in the behind to set it up every time. Alright. Alright. Now, I'm going to decide what I want hanging at the bottom of this. So I'm going to take this shorter triangle and hang that from the bottom. And with these little jump rings, you're going to have to, if you don't have a jumpy tool, and I need to get you one, Just got a pair of needle nose and a pair of flat nose to work that together. Alright, and then I'm going to hang the other pieces um, at varying intervals up the chain. Alright. Okay, so the last thing to do is to just drill the hole in the back, and I'm just going to use my craft knife. Just 
to drill a small hole. Here's the finished piece. I'm glad everybody stuck through this long video with me. And I'll be back again with another one. I shall holler at y'all later. Bye now.